Hi, my name is Rocky Hyatt, and I'm here to show you some tips and tricks about your HVA system you may not know. The tools we'll be using today is the Channel Lock 804S 4 inch adjustable wrench, the Channel Lock 909 crimping tool and cutting tool, the Channel Lock 430 tongue and groove pliers, the channel lock six in one screwdriver. The first thing you wanna do is get acquainted with your HVAC system. The main thing is locate and get familiar with the outdoor portion. This is called the condenser. Take mental notes of the condition of the condenser. Inspect it for any damages to the grill, to the fins. Look at the fan section. You also too wanna to give it a good walk around and familiarize yourself with the system itself. After you do a walk around and taking these mental notes, take a look at the electrical. Touch things. Make sure things are tight. Look to make sure that no sealant is broken. Anything looks out of ordinary. As I was looking over the electrical here, I noticed that this nut here is a little loose. So I'm gonna take my channel lock 430s and tighten it up. Now that may not seem like much, but if it's loose, that means moisture can get in here and cause havoc to our wires. One of the major things that you need to know is how to turn the power off to your system. All HVAC equipment will have a means of disconnect in sight. Uh, this particular system has a pull-out disconnect. Some of them may have a breaker in here. There may even be a breaker panel right here with an assortment of breakers in it labeled for your air conditioning unit. Well, this particular system has this particular disconnect. And to turn the system off or to turn power off to the system, it's simple, grab this and pull it. If you notice on this disconnect itself, it has some nomenclature on the side. You see on and off. Off happens to be upside down. On is right side up. If you insert this where it says on, right side up, that means the disconnect's on. If you insert it where it says off, it's right side up, that means the disconnect is off. And for this purposes today, we're gonna put this back in here in the off position to start our work. One simple trick that most homeowners don't know is if you're planning on doing any outside activities such as mowing, stirring up dirt, blowing leaves, it's always a good practice to turn the power off to your outdoor unit. That way, no dirt and debris is getting sucked into this coal. Now that you have your system turned off, whether it was through a thermostat, whether it's through an app, or whether you actually use the disconnect, you now can continue with your outdoor activities, whether it was mowing, trimming, dirt work, yard work, blowing leaves, whatever the situation may be. Just be aware that this unit is a big coil. This fan pulls air through that coil, and anything that you introduce into the atmosphere around this coal and it's running, it'll pull that stuff in that coal and that coal can become impacted. That means that you'll have to pay an HVAC professional to come out here with harsh chemicals to clean this coal. So you know how to uh, turn the power off to your unit now. I showed you how to do that. You can now remove the disconnect portion and this bottom portion here usually snaps right out. If not, it'll have a small screw that you can take out. This exposes the electrical wiring. Now be careful because this disconnect still has power on it unless you turn it off at the breaker. You notice we have some insects in here. I'm gonna use a little small cheap paintbrush that's wrapped in electrical tape. So that prevents the metal on this paintbrush from conducting electricity or shorting anything out. And I'm gonna gently clean these bugs out of this disconnect. While you're in the same area working on your disconnect, if you have a service outlet, you can also open it up too and clean it out with a brush as well. You also have a ground fault receptacle in that service outlet. You can test it and make sure that it's operating as well and reset it. And then while the power is still off, you can loosen the screws. with your channel lock six and one screwdriver to the electrical section on your condenser. can then maneuver the cover off by pulling down and pulling out. 
than what you have then is the actual electrical section of your condenser. If you see any spider webs, you can take the brush. And you can brush things out, brush the spider webs, the bugs, clean the unit out. While you're in here, you can look for any types of burnt wire, pinched wire, any types of wires that look like they've gotten hot, discoloration, anything of that nature. Just be cautious when you're using your fingers and hands in here, because there may be uh, insects in here that can hurt you, such as spiders, scorpions, uh, in certain areas of the country, snakes could be in here. There could also be bees in here that we mentioned earlier as well. Bees like to nest in these areas as well. So just give it a good look. Check things out, touch things. Make sure everything's connected good, nothing's loose. If you need to add some tie wraps to tighten up some wires, you can do that as well. Another thing you wanna pay attention to when you have the electrical section open is the contactor. This is called a contactor. And some of these contactors have little screws that you can take out to inspect the contacts behind this plastic cover. This one just happens to snap off. You see that there's insects that like to get in here. A lot of ants like to get in here and they can prevent the contacts right here from actually closing they get between the points so you just want to inspect it look for anything of discoloration pitting burning anything of that nature you can take your little brush and clean the insects and webs out of there and put it back together if it looks okay if it doesn't look okay then you may have to contact your HVAC professional to come out and replace it another thing you can do since the power is turned off to the unit you can take your chunk lock six and one and you can put it on these terminals, make sure that they're good and tight. You don't want them too tight, but a loose connection can cause a lot of damage. You also have wires on the contactor that are they're placed on there with terminals. You see these terminals? You wanna make sure that they're good and snug. Loose connections are very, detrimental to your HVAC system. You wanna use caution at all times. Even though the power is off, you still wanna treat the system as if the power is still on. Your wiring in this section may be secured with what we call tie wraps or zip ties. Over the years, these zip ties get brittle and they're known to break. So it may be a good idea to check those. And if they seem like they're brittle, replace them with new zip ties. And if something seems out of proportion, you can always add some zip ties to the wiring to help secure it out of the way so it doesn't get pinched or cause any type of shorts. You can take your channel lock 909s and cut the tails off of these tie wraps and zip ties. Just like that. This particular condenser is a heat pump and it has what we call a defrost board. The power is off, so you can take your brush and clean any spider webs or any bugs that may be collected or accumulated around the defrost board. You can also put your hand on these connectors and make sure that they're good and tight. And while you're doing that, Make note of any visual inspections of anything that looks like it may be a little off or getting hot or burnt. Look at the circuit board. Look at the components on the circuit board. See if they've got any sign of damage of being hot, burnt, brown spots, anything of that nature. In your electrical section on your condenser, you'll have a device that looks like this. This is a dual run capacitor. And what you want to do with the observation of this guy is you want to make sure that it it's round, or if it's an oval capacitor, that it's true to its shape. You wanna notice the top of it, that it doesn't look like it's bulged up. The bottom of it doesn't look like it's bulged out. Everything seems to be flat. You wanna pay attention to any signs of oil or any type of liquid that may be uh, present underneath this lip. That could be a sign that this device is fixing to fail. And without proper tools, there's no way to really determine if this device is good or not but you can look at it and inspect it. While we still have the power off, we can then take our channel lock 804S pocket four inch adjustable wrench. 
And this fan actually has four screws that hold it to the chassis. If you remove these screws, you can then easily lift the fan up. Now that you have the fan secured out of the way, you can look at the actual fan blade itself to inspect for any damage, any cracks that may appear. You also have a set screw on this blade. You can actually put your 804S on it and check the tightness of that set screw. If you look down in the condenser section, you'll notice some debris in there. You wanna to try to keep this area as clean as possible. The best way to clean this debris is to take a small brush or a shop vac and suck this debris out. If you don't have a shop vac, you can take a small broom and brush all the stuff up, this dirt and this debris. So now that you've got the, the large items out of here, you can then take a water hose to it to wash the remaining dirt out. Okay, so once you get the majority of the large items out of here, leaves and etc., and you get the dirt washed out, kind of like to this point, you can go ahead and take your water hose and rinse the coil just like that. Start from the top, work your way down to the bottom, all the way around. And so we got her rinsed out and cleaned out pretty good. Next thing we're gonna do is we wanna inspect the components in here. You wanna look at the wiring. Make sure the wiring's not touching anything. Make sure it's not frayed. Make sure that all the supports are intact. The wire's clearing the fan motor assembly. The wire's not touching any of these pipes because these pipes can get hot. You wanna check the connectors. If you have a reversing valve, make sure that connection's good. You wanna check, just look everything over real good. Make sure everything is, you know, as secure as it could be. Next thing you wanna do is you wanna inspect the compressor and these other components. Now, the compressor and some of these other components are made out of steel and they're painted. Now, sometimes that paint will wear off and if, if steel is exposed to the atmosphere with no paint, it could rust. If you see any rust signs or any spots that's starting to rust, you can definitely take a wire brush and clean it off and get some spray paint and touch it up. That'll help extend the life of that component too as well. You know, HVAC is just like anything, you know, all it takes is a little bit of awareness, you know, taking mental notes, getting aware of what your system looks like and how it operates can go a long ways in keeping you comfortable. As this unit was drying, I noticed the top of this compressor was starting to fade. And that tells me that the paint is starting to go away on it. So we're gonna go ahead and tape the discharge line with painter's tape. And we're gonna put a little tape through here and a little tape through here, okay? Once the top of this compressor dries, I'm gonna go ahead and use some rust prevention high temp paint just to bring the enamel back on top of this compressor back to its original sheen. As the compressor is still wet, I'm going to take a microfiber cloth and wipe the uh, casing down. Now I'm going to paint the top of this compressor. Restore its original beauty. Another thing to pay attention to is the end of the coil. You have a metal end here, a metal end here. This is called the tube sheet, okay? This is the very end of the coil. It's a galvanized steel metal. The copper tubes go through that galvanized steel metal. The copper reacts with the galvanized steel and creates an electrolysis. And when the presence of moisture, salt, uh, humidity, these tube sheets can begin to rust. If that happens, you can always pick up some rust prevention paint and paint that area to stop the rust. Now that the compressor is semi-dry, we can take a microfiber cloth and wipe the inside of this fan section here down because you're not gonna get access to it again after we put the fan back on. One thing you'll notice by looking at the fan is the shaft here. You see how it's starting to rust a little bit? That means the original grease coating protectant is gone. So if you have a way to get some sandpaper on it, you can take sandpaper and sand that rust coating off. If you have access to grease, you can get a little grease out of your grease gun, put it on your finger, and take and rub the grease on the shaft all the way around. 
and that'll restore that protective coating on the shaft from the factory and it'll prevent moisture from getting to the shaft and hub assembly. Just this little step right here can save you from having to buy a fan blade in the future. Put a little grease on that section too and a little bit on the set screw as well just to keep the moisture and rain out. You wouldn't spend $40,000 buying a new car and never wash it, would you? Why would you spend $20,000 on your HVAC system and never wash it? Get you a little car wash, soap in a bucket, microfiber cloth, and give her a good wipe down. Once you give her wipe down real good, take and rinse her off. Do this occasionally throughout the year. It'll make your unit last longer. So now, I've already repaired the insulation here from where the chipmunks have chewed away at it. Uh, another thing to pay attention to is this guy here. This is your filter dryer. If you see any signs of rust on it, it only takes a few seconds to take a wire brush to it and take a little paint. That'll prevent that guy from rusting out. Just be sure not to get any paint on the copper portion. Now, everything I've shown you will definitely help improve your system and make your system last longer. With that being said, there are items in the system that you just cannot afford to take a chance on. And that's these two items here, the contactor and the capacitor. You really need a set of professional eyes and special tools to check these. So with well, that being said, you still need to have at least an annual preventive maintenance agreement contract with the HVAC professional company to be able to test these items. Because if one of these fails, it can kill your compressor and your compressor is the heart of your system. Now that you've completed all the tips and tricks, you can turn your disconnect back on. You can go to your application on your smartphone and you can turn it back on. And that's all you gotta do. How simple was that? Something you can do? I'm sure you can. If you follow those steps and be safe the entire time, you too can do this.